Reject. All right. Good morning. I should have slides in a second. Hold on. There we go. <laughs> Good morning, Berlin. Uh, show of hands, who feels that they slept really well last night? <laughs> All right, that's great. Who feels that like they're a little bit tired this morning and uh, they could have maybe gotten a better night's sleep? I certainly feel that. I flew a, a long way to be here. Uh, I'm Nick. I'm a software engineer, and I've always had trouble sleeping. And uh, I got interested in sleep very seriously when I went off to university, and I started taking it seriously. And I've spent the last seven years tinkering with my sleep cycle, with my circadian rhythm. And today, I'm using JavaScript to power an artificial environment that helps me get a better night's sleep. And I'd like to tell you about it. Why would you want to hack your sleep? Like, why would you go down this road of starting to play with your circadian rhythm? I think if you're tired in the morning, you wake up and you feel like it's hard to get up and get going in the day, that's a good reason. Or maybe if when you go to bed at night, you've got like your mind racing and you've got great ideas and you're just not ready for bed at the right time. If you go to work and like 2 p.m., this is you and your head is like crashing into your laptop, um, that'd be a good reason to hack sleep. And also kind of interestingly, uh, certain kinds of depression are linked with sleep. And certain kinds of depression can be treated very well by hacking your sleep. I think that's really cool. I'll have more to tell you about that. Maybe uh, you wake up every morning and you kind of feel like this. I hope none of you are feeling like that right now. Or maybe in the night you don't feel like this, and hopefully that's not you at work. <laughs> Poor little dog. <laughs> My house is a smart environment. It's a smart home, which means that it thinks and does things, but not that it's brilliant. Um, and if you were to hang around in my house for a long time, here's some interesting things you would notice. First, you would notice there are no light switches, or if there are light switches, they've, uh, they've got a little post-it tape to them that says, no, don't touch. And, uh, this is because I haven't touched light switches in many months. And every light in the house is addressable. Every light in, in my home, you can say to that light, I'd like you to be this color, this intensity. And it can set itself to any of millions of colors and then different brightnesses as well. And all of that means that, interestingly, the lights turn themselves on and off throughout the day. And this works with my natural rhythms to make sure I'm getting a good night's sleep or I'm awake at the right time. So this is really cool. It's geeky. It's fun to hack on. It's powered by JavaScript. And it's had a big impact on my, my sleep and my quality of life. So I'd like to tell you what it's like, like a day in my life and walk through what that is and how that works. I live here in Pacifica, California which is a pretty bright environment, and it's, uh, it's very near San Francisco, although just outside, right by the ocean. Um, and a day in my life looks something like this. I wake up in the morning, I get ready for my day, and I get ready to leave, and then I go off to work, and then in the evening I come home, and the sun naturally sets, and then I go to bed. But in that cycle, the house is doing many things. So in the morning, about 60 minutes before I wake up, my living room lights turn on, and they come up, and they are bright white, which is designed to help me feel awake, and the kitchen lights turn on. And that looks something like this. Um, early in the morning, the living room lights come on as bright white, and like I said, the kitchen lights come on as bright white to make sure that like, when I go out to have a bowl of cereal that uh, I'm awake and ready for my day. Then the house does something really cool. About 30 minutes before I get up, it runs code to simulate a sunrise. So in the bedroom, there's this big rig of lights. And they look like this. Some lights are pointing up, some lights are pointing down to make sure that there's an even distribution of light throughout the room. And the lights dim up on an S curve. And this mimics what the sun naturally does. The sun begins to rise uh, slowly and then accelerates over time. 
uh, this is in terms of brightness, and then the, it starts to level off and it doesn't get bright as quickly. And so the lights in my bedroom mimic this same pattern. They come up with a very specific color temperature. Um, light colors are measured in Kelvin, and uh, as you see here, like 1,000 Kelvin is very warm and very yellowish, and like 10,000 Kelvin is very cool. So the lights come up sort of in the middle, but edging more towards the cool blue, because this has a big impact on how we feel and what's happening in our body first thing in the morning. Then it's time to go, and all the lights in the house, uh, they tell me it's time to go. They just turn off. So this is really helpful, because I don't have to like, look at my watch and wonder, is it time to go for my day? And it's really cool. Then I go off to work at a really cool fashion and tech company called Modcloth. I don't think they're very big in Germany. I know they're not very big in Germany, but we're very cool, and you should check us out. <laughs> and then this same process uh, sort of repeats and goes backwards when I get home. So about 60 minutes before bedtime, the house begins to turn off different lights in the house to encourage me towards uh, my bedroom. So the kitchen lights go off, the office lights uh, dim down, which is a really good signal, like time to stop hacking, uh, time to get ready for bed. And then uh, more lights go off until at bedtime, the whole house goes off signaling like, time to go to bed. And then the lights just on the outside of the house turn on to make sure the house is secure. So that same process repeats. All of this runs on a little x86 computer, a little Intel NUC, and all the code's written in JavaScript, and uh, I'll tell you more about some of the specific code that runs the house a little bit later on. This system is the result of a lot of research. It hasn't always looked like I just walked you through today, and it hasn't always taken up my whole house. I want to tell you how my house has evolved in terms of hardware and software, and how I came to control all of it in JavaScript, and why I think JavaScript is the right choice for this kind of control. At the end of the talk, I'll give you some ideas on how, if you're interested, you can start hacking your sleep so that you don't raise your hand during the part when I say, like, are you a little bit sleepy? Before we go on, a couple of disclaimers. I'm not a doctor. I'm going to summarize some medical research but I want to make it clear that I have no advanced training in medicine, and so anything I say, you should do your own research and consult your own doctor. I'm not giving you medical advice. Um, I'm not a scientist, and so I believe I've interpreted everything I've read correctly, but if I haven't and you know it, I'd love to know about that. I'm not a lawyer, and uh, so what I have to say is everything I present in this talk is for entertainment purposes only. <laughs> I've already invited you into my house a little bit. I should make it clear I'm also not an interior designer. <laughs> Any critiques you have of my interior design are probably well-deserved. I am an engineer, though, which means that I'm willing to dive into things, I'm willing to tinker with things, and I really want to understand things at a deep level. I'm not saying that our bodies are machines, because we're not. Our bodies are very complicated. We respond to stress and the environment in ways that are more complicated than any machine ever could. But what I am saying is our bodies are a lot like a machine, and if you understand the inputs, you can change the outputs. Before we go on, I think it's helpful to understand circadian rhythm and what it is and how it works. And so there's this great YouTube channel called SciShow, and I have the permission of Hank Green to show his video about uh, circadian rhythm. So I just have a short clip here. <laughs> uh, which may have audio. Ooh. All right. Audio? Okay. That's all right. Uh, we don't have audio here. Um, so what this guy is saying, I will summarize for you. Uh, so our body has this natural internal clock called a circadian rhythm. And your circadian rhythm is flu influenced by all kinds of things, like light and stress and sleep. And your circadian uh, rhythm controls 
all sorts of things that are going on in your body, but most importantly, it controls when you're awake and when you're asleep, um, how tired you are, your desire for food, and, um, and, and things like that. There's two important chemicals that are involved with regulating your circadian rhythm. There's melatonin, which spikes in the evening and uh, makes you feel sleepy and ready for bed. And then there's cortisol, which spikes in the morning and makes you feel alert and awake and ready to take on the day. Um, these chemicals are influenced by a lot of things, but most importantly for me, light. So I haven't always lived in California. I grew up in upstate New York. And I think geography has a big impact on who you are. The kind of weather and climate you grow up in has a big impact on how you see the world and what's normal to you. Um, for quick reference, upstate New York is a long way from New York City. It's uh, 535 kilometers, or as we would say, about an eight-hour drive. Uh, and it looks, like, it looks like this. So this is from my university. The year is 2006, and this is what my world looks like. And I'm pretty unhappy. Um, I'm having trouble going to classes. I'm having trouble getting up in the morning. And it's just really hard for me to, to do the things I need to do. So I went to a, a doctor, to a professional, and he said, ah, this sounds like seasonal affective disorder, which is also called the winter blues. And it's a kind of depression that comes on as the days get darker and then recedes as the days get lighter. So I started to do my own research about this and started to think about it. Um, but before I could really do anything about it, summer arrives. And this is summer in upstate New York. It's beautiful. It's the kind of thing people write poetry about. Um, people go boating, and it's bright, and it's light. And so I was just not affected during the summer, so my research stopped. Fall returns, and again, I'm having trouble sleeping, and I'm starting to do research. And I came across this uh, paper that had a big impact on how I started to think about sleep. And it's titled, Circadian Rhythm Phase Advancement with Dawn Simulation for Treatment of Winter Depression. And uh, I will read you uh, one quote from the abstract. The authors conclude that bright light and dawn treatment simulations both produced average phase advancements, advancements of about 30 minutes, while other tested effects had minimal effects. The authors conclude that very dim, incremental levels of light at the end of the night with a dominant red component through eyelid filtering facilitates circadian rhythm phase advancement, possibly in conjunction with room light after awakening. So that's pretty dense. But what the authors are saying is that light dimming up slowly in the morning begins to wake up your circadian rhythm and begins to shift you back into a normal rhythm and routine. And what they found is that this can be as effective as bright light therapy um, for treating seasonal affective disorder. So I read all of this, and I thought, as an engineering student, I can do this. So I built this, which doesn't look like much, but it consists of two lights and a dimmer plug hidden under the bed. And that box labeled control was my first step in building an artificial sunrise. And programming this thing was awful. It was like, uh, like early gaming systems, like you would hold down buttons with the right combination for the right amount of time, and that's how you would program the system. It was not very advanced, but it did start to get me to think about sleep. And so I used it for about a year, and then summer returns, and it's beautiful, and I, I didn't really need the system anymore. And I concluded that this was a cool, geeky project, and it was a nicer way to wake up in the morning, and I felt a little bit better. So I used that for about a year, and fall returns. Of course, in university, you're always moving new apartments, new people. So when fall returned, I had a new place, and I had taken it all apart. And I started thinking about the amount of light I got throughout the day. So this is like a typical noonday scene in upstate New York during the fall. As you can see, it's not very bright. Now, I've only spent a little bit of time in Germany, but it seems like the climate here is perhaps very similar. Um, so I started to think about getting more light, and I built a new system. <laughs> As you see, this system needed a lot more hardware, which was great. Um, what, what you see here is there's two lights by the bed that dimmed up very slowly, and then two lights pointing down that could also dim up very slowly. And that, like the previous system, would work over about 30 minutes, 
And then after that dimmed up very slowly, awakening me nicely, kerchunk. I'd get this huge dose of light. Um, so these bright lights were put together to do bright light therapy and make sure I was being exposed to enough light. This whole thing got me thinking about uh, sunrise and sunset and the effect of light that light has on us throughout the day. With all this more hardware, which was great, I also needed more software to control it. So the system moved from something that was programmed kind of like an early game system to being a, a full-on laptop, which was stuffed away in a closet. And I wish I had code from this time, but it was all Visual Basic. Um, we can debate about whether that's real programming or not. <laughs> But it was a lot more complicated. Uh, I had now had to talk to a serial port, and I was bit shifting out across it. Um, I had to do funny things, like make sure lights still existed on the network I was talking to. And sometimes lights would just cease to be on the network. And all of this made it really hard to talk about high-level abstractions. I couldn't talk about, like, this is the state I want the world to be in at this time. I had to think very low level about serial ports and lights and uh, RF noise and if it's lightning and raining and just all these kind of complications, which were fun to solve, but not really what I was interested in as, as I was hacking my sleep. So I used this for about a year. It had a really great impact. I felt happier. I was more likely to go to class. Um, and things felt a lot better in my life. Uh, after I built this system, I was really tired. I had just finished university, and it was <laughs> time for me to get my first job. I moved across the country to California. and. Uh, I needed to build a new system to get me into a regular routine, because now it wasn't like university anymore, where I had three or four hours of classes and the rest of my time was my own. Instead, now I needed to get up every day, put on a shirt, go to work, and be awake and do good work every day. So I built another system. This system, I wanted to have much higher uh, girlfriend approval factor. <laughs> So you'll note that this system has way less wires, uh, and it looks way less intimidating. Um, I thought that bright light therapy might still be a part of my life. I wasn't sure how much exposure to light I was going to get, and I wasn't sure how much I was going to need. So I set the system up to do that, but as it turns out, that wasn't really necessary because I was getting enough light throughout the day. The control also evolved a lot as well. The control system moved from Visual Basic to Lua, and it was on this little green box called a Vera. Um, and the code to actually run the sunrise looked like this. And I, I can tell it's a little hard to see what's going on up there, but I think the, the key takeaway was uh, Visual Basic, the code was pages and pages and pages, and the code to run the sunrise here is about 20 lines. So it's getting better. It was possible for me to talk about more high-level abstractions, and it was possible for me to think more about the system holistically. You'll see I'm still dealing with the UPnP spec here, which is no fun for anyone that's ever dealt with that. It's a lovely SOAP API. Um, but this was a big step forward in terms of control. With more sunlight, I was less focused on the seasonal affective disorder and more focused on just sleep in general and feeling awake and alert. And so I started to hack my sleep from both ends. Now, when I was looking at what I wanted to do next, I used this great program called Flux. Flux is a program for your laptop which, after sunset, color shifts your screen so that you're no longer being exposed to blue light as much. And it makes sure you're being exposed to more yellowish red lights. And I'd been using this for some time. A friend had recommended it to me and said, like, this really helps with my sleep. You might be interested. So I'd installed it, and I'd been using it. And I think it kind of had helped my sleep. But I wondered, like, is this real science, or is this like pseudoscience? Like, uh, we promise this is going to work. So I went to their website, and I started looking into their research. And these guys are really, really serious about research. They had like 400 journal articles linked about the effects of different kind of light on your circadian rhythm. And um, lots of great articles, but I, th I think that this article uh, was very clear and very easy to understand. So the New York Times published this, and 
the conclusions that they publish, what they come to is the kind of light that hits your eye throughout the day has a big impact on what's going on in your body. And that orangish yellow light helps to release melatonin in our body. And that bright white and blue light helps to stop melatonin from being produced and helps to produce cortisol. Now, this is great news if you're out in nature and the sun is naturally rising and that's your environment. And it's kind of bad news if you're stuck inside all day and uh, you're looking at lights that are coming down on you. The other bad news is our laptops tend to put out really bluish white light. And so if you're working late into the night, you're actually stopping your body from producing the chemicals that make you sleepy and feel ready for bed. So I thought, like, OK, a y this is really cool. Because at the same time, Philips came out with this new kind of bulb called the Hue. And the Hue lets you produce millions of colors. I was telling you about what it does in my house earlier. Um, and I thought, OK, a y great. If it's bad to be exposed to blue light at night, I can do things to make sure that I'm not being exposed to that harsher blue light. And instead, I'm being exposed to more yellowish red. And that in the morning, I can be exposed to things that make me feel awake. Now, the Hue has a great uh, control API. It's all over HTTP. And I started looking at how I can control these bulbs and make them do what I want and not just work with the little iPhone app that it ships with. So I had to build out a lot more advanced system. And this is when I came to JavaScript. And I want to tell you about three parts of the system that I'm using today to control my house. I want to tell you about the clock. and the, the config uh, translation, and then how the bulbs themselves are actually controlled. So the key object in my system is a clock. And the clock translates the like, ticking of a clock to JavaScript events that I can bind onto. So I can, for example, register that the natural sun sets at 6.30 like this. And then in the system, at 6.29, Uh, onto a global event bus gets fired this event one minute before sunset. And then at 6.30, the event gets fired at sunset. And then at 6.31, one minute after sunset. The clock has a really small API. Um, and this is something I love about JavaScript, is that you have these small libraries that are really focused on one thing. And so you can really understand the API that you're working with and take full advantage of it. Uh, the clock gets cleared at midnight, and all events get cleared out so that the next day they need to be repopulated. So remember before, I had this slide up with my getting ready for sleep schedule. What we're actually looking at here is a markdown file. And this markdown file gets read and parsed by the system and gets converted to this JavaScript file. So before, I was showing you the clock. And I was saying the clock fires events like one minute before sunset. Well, here you see that markdown file got translated. So 60 minutes before bedtime became an event that the system's actually looking for. And then the home sets the lights to the right temperature. So this is really great, because my girlfriend doesn't write JavaScript. She, but she does understand how to read a markdown file. And so this is a really great place for us to be able to communicate about what the house is going to do and make sure that uh, we both understand. And then it gets translated to code that actually gets run here. All of this gets read and parsed with JSON, which is the same tool that CoffeeScript uses. The last thing I want to tell you about is the uh, Hue API. Now, I didn't write this. This is written by a guy called Peter Murray. And this is the best control library for the Hue. I've tried them all. I've tried them in Java and Ruby and JavaScript. And this one is the most fun to work with and I think the most productive. I love that the library is built with one small purpose. Before I started writing this system in JavaScript, I toyed with writing it in Ruby. And I had found that I was building this big framework for controlling my house, and I was never controlling my house. I was never hacking my sleep, because I was so focused on building this framework. When I started writing in JavaScript, I found right away, like, ah, I'm writing the code to control my house and to sleep better. And that felt great. So here's the smallest amount of code you can do to control the hue. And I want to highlight one line in particular. Here we see light state. 
Now, this is the problem I'd had with all of the other systems I'd been programming in. In Visual Basic, it was talking with serial ports. In Lua, it was talking to UPnP. But finally, here in JavaScript, I'm just saying, here is the state of the world that I want. I want the light to be on. I want it to be white. And I want it to have this warmth and uh, this intensity. And this is great. This does exactly what you think it would do. It turns the light on, and it, it's really great to work with. Another great thing is I no longer have to worry about nodes disappearing from the network. That's all handled by the Hue API. You can do so many cool things with this. You can turn the lights on and off. You can alert them. Um, you can set them to different colors. And then you can do really cool effects. Like I said, all of this runs on a little computer that draws almost no energy. The Intel NUC platform is really cool. It's really low energy, and you can leave it on day and night and not feel too guilty about it. So this is all pretty cool. If you're interested in hacking your sleep, here's some advice that I have. The easiest thing you can do, uh, it costs no money, is to try Flux. You can get Flux at justgetflux.com. And like I said, this color shifts your computer screen so that at night you're not being exposed to so much blue light. The only downside I can come up for this pro with this program is it's not written in JavaScript. The next thing to try is setting an alarm for bedtime. Now, my lights uh, turn off at different times, which has really helped me get to bed at a reasonable time. What I've found, though, is that really just having that trigger, like anything happening, it helps that the lights are the right color, but anything happening to get me closer to bed is a big deal. We really are creatures of habit. And so I know we're all used to setting alarms in the morning, but setting an alarm in the evening can be really effective at helping you get a great night's sleep. Cut down on the amount of blue light that you get. Uh, you see on the left, uh, you can do really cool things with the hue bulbs. Now, this isn't easy. Um, I know the siren call of my, my iPad and my uh, phone at night and wanting to check my email. It's really hard to get away from our devices. But the more you can put your device away, especially after the sun sets, and the less blue light you can get, the more melatonin your body produces and the more ready for bed you'll feel, and consequently, the more awake you'll feel the next day. And finally, if the, if the hue stuff is interesting to you, um, it's so cool. These bulbs are available in the US and the EU, and they're great fun to hack around with. My system has made a big difference for me. It's helped with my sleep, it's helped with my happiness, and it's really uh, been a big part of my life. Like I said, I've been doing this for about seven years, and I'm nowhere near done. Right now, I'm thinking about daylight savings time. So daylight savings time, normally, you're waking up at one time every morning, and then suddenly you've got to fall behind, and like, suddenly you're waking up an hour difference. And that's really hard on your system. So the next thing I'm looking at is gradually moving the time I wake by three or four minutes every day leading up to daylight savings time. And I think that's going to have a big impact on my sleep. I'd love to hear if this inspires you to do something cool or if you're doing something cool around this already. Uh, and let me know. I'm Nick Staramis on Twitter. Thank you very much. Reject.